So tell me if this has happened to you. You sit down to make this awesome and brilliant paper craft project with your Cricut machine, but instead of getting a cleanly cut design, you end up with a shredded and tattered mess that might look something like this or even worse. Now the good news, my friend, is you're not alone in that. And today in this tutorial, I am going to be sharing five pro tips with you that will guarantee your paper craft projects get cut out flawlessly every single time. So let's get to it. I'm Abby, creator and owner at Abby Kirsten Collections, and I teach others how to unlock their creative potential and confidently craft with their Cricut machine. In today's tutorial, we're talking all about cardstock troubleshooting. So let's start with number one, which is all about the Cricut blade. So when it comes to working with paper craft projects, you are going to be using the fine point blade with your Cricut machine. This goes for the Maker models, the Explore models, and the Cricut Joy machine. They all work with the fine point blade. Now, the fine point blade is an amazing blade, but there are certain things you need to check with your blade if you're experiencing ripping and tearing with your paper craft projects. First, how old is your blade? If your blade has been well used and you're a very active Cricut crafter and you've had it for three or more months and you craft on a very regular basis, you probably are going to want to consider completely replacing your blade. Now the good news is you can buy multi-packs of blades that are very affordable and I'm going to link that resource below for you. Now, what if you know that your blade is still in good condition, but it still seems to be causing a problem with getting a clean cut? It may mean that your blade needs to get a bit of a cleaning on the very tip, or it could have some excessive debris caught up around the blade. If there is debris on your blade, it will cause tearing on whatever material it's trying to cut because it can't make good contact and a clean cut as it moves through your material. So how do we clean a blade properly if we know our blade's in good enough condition to still use, but it needs a thorough cleaning to get it to work properly? You may have heard uh, things about, you know, your, that maybe a ball of tin foil can sharpen a blade. Now a ball of tin foil cannot sharpen a Cricut blade that is just too far gone. It can, however, clean your Cricut blade. So if there is, you know, maybe some glitter caught up in there because you cut glitter cardstock or some other debris, you can easily shove it in and out of a ball of tin foil several times and it will clean off that excess. So all you need to do is keep a little ball of tin foil in your craft room and shove it in and out a few times. I like to push the button on the top here so that it extends the blade and then shove it in and out of the tin foil ball a few times and that will clean off any debris that is around that blade there, okay? So that's your point number one, check your blade. All right, pro tip number two for troubleshooting your card stuff that is ripping with your Cricut machine is checking your mats. Okay, there's actually quite a few things that can go wrong from a mat perspective when you're cutting cardstock or any kind of paper with your Cricut machine. So first, let's talk about, well, which mat should you be using for your cardstock or your paper crafts? Well, the answer is twofold. Both the light grip blue mat and the standard grip green mat can work for cardstock and paper craft projects. There's a few different things you're going to want to think about, though, based on choosing which mat you decide to go with. So for the light grip mat, the light grip mat is great for lighter weight paper. So copy paper, um, lightweight card stocks, medium weight card stocks, those are all best for the light grip mat. Now I have regularly also used the green mat with a medium and even occasionally a light card stock as long as the green mat has been used a couple of times before and it's not fresh with that liner off of it and it's super, super sticky. As a whole, card stocks and light card stocks in general, the light grip map is going to be your uh, best choice in general, but I have successfully used both. Now, let's say you tried both and you're still having problems with your paper ripping. There's a few things to check. Number one, is your mat sticky enough? Is your mat really, really well worn? Have you used it for many, many, many cuts and it's just not very sticky anymore? 
If that is the case, you need to either clean your mat properly or it might be time to replace your Cricut mat. So how do we clean our mats properly? The best and easiest way to do this is simply to wash them with a little bit of dish soap and some warm water and then pat them dry with a paper towel lightly and let them finish air drying before you go to use them on your next project. If you know that you have been using this same mat for many, many projects and maybe you try washing it or have already tried it and it's still not quite improving, you may just need to buy a new Cricut mat. So another uh, important point to think about with your mats is even if they are relatively new or you have maybe washed them recently and cleaned them up, you do want to check to make sure that there is not a bunch of little debris from other projects, uh, pet hair, lint, dander, that kind of stuff stuck to the mat. If that happens, it's going to disrupt your cuts, especially for intricate cut projects. This is a big thing that I think a lot of crafters overlook when it comes to tearing with their cardstock. Reason being is we always look at what's wrong with the SVG or blade and the obvious things first, but sometimes it's as simple as the paper isn't sticking in the area that it should be and it's lifting. Even if we can't see it with our eye, it's lifting during the cut and it's causing it to tear while that blade is running through the paper. So you wanna make sure you're getting all that bit of debris off of your mat before you go into a cardstock project, especially for a more intricate project. So if we take a closer look at this light grip mat here, you can see, if we look right about there, there is little pieces of debris that are actually stuck on my mat here. And they look pretty tiny. Um, you can even see even tinier pieces here, like these little tiny pieces. And you can see some pet hair. I have doggies and there's been some pet hair that has actually stuck to the mat here. So these are all things that are going to affect your cut. So make sure you use something like a Cricut scraper tool and you clean this off properly by removing all the obvious large pieces with your Cricut scraper tool and getting them off the mat. Now, when you are storing your Cricut mats, no matter which Cricut mat it is, you wanna make sure you save this top liner that comes on all of your Cricut mats because if you have um, you know, pets in your house or just dust and things like that, it's going to eventually attach to that mat. And if we save this liner, which is very easy to just toss, we can place it right back over the mat and it's going to save us from getting any of that stuff stuck there or even other materials if we have these laying on a desk other materials can get stuck to it and then we have a problem. So it saves you from needing to go back and clean and all that stuff or even not be able to get things off like, you know, I don't know about you, but pet hair in my house, I can't get it off once it's on. It's pretty much there. <laughs> so save those liners and make sure you check your mats that they are plenty sticky and they are completely clean. One other thing you can do with your Cricut mats to ensure that your paper is sticking properly to the mat, because we want it sticking perfectly evenly over the entire surface of the mat, when you place your cardstock down, you can use a brayer tool to push the material to the mat. This is especially handy if you're working with a mat that has been used a few times already and it needs a little extra encouragement to get that material to stick properly. Um, this is not something you necessarily need to do if you're working with a fresh, brand new fresh mat. Um, but with anything after the first two or three cuts you've done with a mat, a brayer tool is really great because instead of just sort of smoothing it on with our hands where it might still have little areas um, and little pockets that it's lifting up in, the brayer tool ensures that we're pressing completely across that surface of paper and it's making excellent contact with the mat, which is going to aid the Cricut machine and the blade to making a very clean cut when it's cutting into this paper. All right, so pro tip number three is the cardstock material itself. So there are some cardstocks out there and papers that just may not work well on your Cricut machine. Now there are plenty that do work well and we're gonna get into more of that in just a minute, but I want to talk about the types of papers that you wanna look for for best results for your cardstock projects with Cricut. So I recommend 65 pound cardstock for best results across the board in general. In most cases, anywhere from a 50 pound to a 100 pound cardstock is going to be um, something that Cricut can handle and cut. Now, a couple things to think about with your cardstock is 
Is it textured? Does it have um, sort of a shimmer or a finish to it? All these things are factors that are actually going to affect how your cardstock cuts on your Cricut machine. And a lot of that can have to do with material settings, which we're going to get into in a moment. Now, where do I find cardstocks that work excellent with Cricut? So my favorite online resource for cardstock is the 12 by 12 cardstock shop. I'll link it below for you. They have hundreds of varieties of papers, every color and shade you can imagine. They have glitter, they have pearl, they have metallic. They have so many different options there and all of them that I have ever tested and I've tested quite a few of theirs have cut beautifully on the Cricut machine. So they are one of my favorite online resources. I also like to recommend um, craft stores in general, like Michael's craft store is great if you have one near you and you wanna go you know, pick the paper out in person. Um, they generally have plenty of paper options there. I love their recollections brand a lot as well, and they will sell those in paper packs there as well. Now in general, I like to stick around the 65 pound cardstock weight and it will usually say it on the package or on the website listing. Um, if you're in another location, it may say it in grams, and you can use an online converter to figure out the grams versus pounds different for the cardstock. And all that means in pounds or grams is just how thick your cardstock is. And the thickness is therefore going to perform differently and it's also going to mean you're gonna to have to choose a different material setting, which is what we are going to talk, be talking about next. Okay, so we're now on to point number four. Pro tip number four is your material setting in design space and or your pressure setting in design space is affecting the outcome of your paper, whether it's cutting well or it's ripping and tearing and causing a tattered mess. This is especially important if you are working with intricate style projects. If you're cutting a simple square or circle, you could probably get away with choosing different settings and it will work just fine. If we're cutting something that's super intricate like this or like this, you really need to be careful with which material settings you are selecting in Cricut Design Space. So let's take a closer look because I want to show you exactly what I do when I'm trying to figure out which material setting and the pressure that I need to put onto my particular cardstock. So taking a closer look in Design Space here, let's take this project as an example since I've shown it to you a few times. This is my rainbow project here, and I'm going to go ahead and click on the Make It button so that we can go to the cut screen and I want to show you what I will do for my material settings when it comes to something like this. Now, taking a look at this one here, that's sort of a silhouette design. Probably wouldn't have a lot of issues. Now, if we start looking at some of these other things like the clouds, the detailed nature of this, um, and let's see, like this one here, it's got all the little cutouts. Those are where we will often find problems with tearing. So if I connect this to my Cricut machine and take a look at the material settings, so here's our material settings. We can click browse all materials to find um, all the different types of paper or cardstock materials that they offer. So you could plug in the keyword cardstock, if I can spell there, <laughs> to start. And here's a bunch of different types of cardstock material. So if I know I'm using a heavyweight cardstock, I'm gonna wanna select that heavyweight 100 pound cardstock setting. If I'm using intricate cuts, this is my favorite one to use for intricate cuts like this rainbow design here. I'm gonna wanna select the cardstock for intricate cuts. And the reason why this one's so great for intricate cuts is because it puts less pressure on the material and it goes over it twice, so it cuts it more gently and it doesn't um, stand as much risk as ripping. But as you can see here, there's lots of different cardstocks to choose from. So if I'm using glitter, then we would do that. There's even more if you exchange the keyword cardstock for paper, you'll find even more. So we have construction paper and copy paper and crepe paper and flocked paper and patterned paper and scrapbooking paper and so many other things. So make sure you check out all these options with your material settings because sometimes it's as simple as switching a material setting. Now, let's take another practical example here because there's one other trick in the material settings that you wanna be aware of. 
I use medium cardstock quite a bit, and I actually use this with 65 pound weighted cardstock, even though it says 65 pound can be used with the light cardstock setting, I find it actually works better with the medium cardstock setting. So I will often use medium cardstock for the 65 pound um, weight. But there are times where I have sort of a 65 pound cardstock that maybe isn't quite cutting um, all the way through. Maybe I chose the light cardstock setting uh, and it's just not quite cutting all the way through. But if I try and choose the medium cardstock setting, maybe it's now ripping the paper because it's just too much pressure on the paper. Well, what we can do is we can select any material here in Design Space. Let's take light cardstock. And once we select it, we see a pressure option here. This is one of the best ways to increase or decrease the pressure uh, on your material very easily. So perhaps the setting is working all right, but it's just not quite cutting all the way through. I could change from default to more and it will put just a little bit more pressure to get it to cut all the way through. Or maybe it's doing all right in some spots, but it's tearing in others. Maybe I choose less pressure. So check out all those material setting options and those pressure dropdown options if you think you're struggling with the type of material that you're selecting in Design Space. Okay, so pro tip number five for working with cardstock and your Cricut machine is that your SVG file design that you have chosen could be scaled too small for the Cricut to cut accurately or you may have even chosen an SVG that is possibly not ideal for paper crafting. So giving you another example here with one of my Mandela projects, I have lots of these. Um, this rainbow design here that I've referenced already a couple times, it has a lot of little details in the rainbow layers here, okay? So if I were to scale this entire thing down, this is about 10 inches here. If I were to scale this entire thing down to say only four to five inches, so about half of this or a little less, think of how tiny all these little details are going to be if the entire thing is only around four or five inches. It's going to be very, very hard for Cricut to cut that out accurately because it's just so small. Crickets are amazing and they can do a lot, but like with everything, there are certain limitations we have to consider. So if maybe you've tried everything else and your project is on the smaller side for the intricate nature of what you're working with, try scaling it up two or three inches if you can and give it another try. You may find that that solves all of those ripping paper problems and it works just fine. Now, another point is that maybe your SVG file that you chose is just not ideal for working with paper crafts. Let me give you a close up example of what this would look like in Cricut Design Space so that you're better educated on how to choose the right SVG files before you actually start cutting anything on your Cricut machine with paper. Taking a look at this love bug design, there is these cute little swashes that go around the letters here, these tiny little dots, and then this sort of squiggly line here. This is something that cutting out in paper will probably tear or get kind of bent or crumpled, and even more so trying to glue this or fasten it onto something else is going to be almost impossible. This design is ideal for vinyl or an iron-on heat transfer vinyl. So think about your actual design as well. Is this ideal for a paper craft? So just some extra things to think about there in your design space setup. Now, if you need more help remembering these tips the next time you are cutting cardstock with your Cricut machine, I want you to go ahead and download this free printable guide for cutting cardstock with your Cricut. I am linking it below in the video description for you and in the corner of this video also. What other questions do you have about cutting cardstock with your Cricut machine? Let me know below and I'd love to help you. I'll see you there. Bye for now.